Madam President, I rise to discuss the nomination of Mr. David Barron to be a Federal Court of Appeals judge. I want to commend my friend Senator Rand Paul for his excellent remarks earlier today and his leadership uh, against Mr. Barron's nomination. I've known Mr. Barron a long time. He and I were classmates in law school. He is a smart man. He is a talented man. He is a professor at the Harvard Law School and a well-respected professor. But Mr. Barron is an unabashed judicial activist. He is an unapologetic and vocal advocate for judges applying liberal policy from the bench and disregarding the terms of the Constitution and the laws of the land. And if the members of this body vote to confirm him, we will bear responsibility for undermining liberty and undermining rule of law in this country. It is well known that Mr. Barron, as a senior official in the Obama Justice Department, authored memos allowing the United States government to use drones to kill American citizens abroad who were known or suspected to be terrorists. Without any trial, without any due process, and to date, we still don't have the details of all of those memos. A number of us, including me, have called for releasing the memos that would allow the U.S. government to use lethal force against U.S. citizens. I'm pleased to say the administration has in part complied, but we don't have all of those memos. And yet this body is being asked to proceed with giving Mr. Barron a lifetime appointment without knowing the full context of the advice he gave. I would note that Mr. Barron previously in 2006 joined a group of legal scholars calling for more transparency in the OLC opinions that he subsequently wrote and that the administration is now keeping secret. But beyond that, beyond Mr. Barron's providing the legal basis for the targeted killings of American citizens abroad without judicial process, Mr. Barron, both in law school and in his writings as a law professor, has been an enthusiastic advocate of judicial activism. You know, it, it has become de rigueur for judicial nominees to forswear activism, to say, even if their record is to the contrary, no, 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 Senator, I will comply with the law. And to Mr. Barron's credit, his writings have a degree of candor that are unusual. So, for example, he's argued that courts should override elected state legislatures and enforce left-wing policies. In one particular article that he wrote, Mr. Barron, in one law review, wrote, quote, state Supreme Courts, not state legislatures, have led the revolution in school financing equality through, through judicial, though judicial actions have catalyzed political responses. And he went on to say that liberals should not object to conservative court decisions because progressive constitutionalists enamored of the anti-court rhetoric rarely, rarely take into account its potential downstream effects on state court interpretation and legitimacy. In other words, he's worried that people on the court might be arguing that courts should follow the law because that would constrain the ability of courts to instead impose a far left political policy agenda. Likewise, in a different article, he argues, it is precisely because the anti-court strain singles out conservative judicial activism as the problem that it threatens to work progressive constitutional theory into a corner. It needlessly rejects the progressive potential of a significant wielder of power, the courts. Madam President, let me underscore that every member of this body that votes to confirm Mr. Barron is voting for a candidate who has stated he intends to use the courts as a, quote, significant wielder of power. And indeed, what is, the, what is the agenda that he would embrace? He has else, elsewhere written that he, he, quote, we contend that the constitutional argument favoring preclusive executive power necessarily rests on a strong form of living constitutionalism. Madam President, there are members of this body, Democratic members of this body, who are campaigning right now in their home states saying they don't support judicial activism, they don't support a so-called living constitution, judges imposing far-left policies and disregarding the law. 
Well, let me say any Democratic member of this body that votes for Mr. Barron is on record in support of judicial activism and living constitutionalism. Beyond that, Mr. Barron has explicitly written his opposition to federalism. Indeed, he, he says, there is precious little in the Constitution text or history of its adoption that compels the particular conservative allocation of national local powers favored by the Rehnquist Court. He has made clear his agenda to overturn or ignore Supreme Court precedents. When he says there's little in the text or history, it seems somehow he has not read or focused on the Tenth Amendment or the Federalist Papers or the debates on ratification. Beyond that, he is an emphatic advocate of the takings clause, of government power taking private property, such as the Kelo decision, big moneyed interest going to government and using government power to condemn your private land. He's an emphatic advocate of that and of courts facilitating and exp expanding that. He has written that the executive branch should be able to waive laws with which it disagrees, a lawlessness that sadly has run rampant in this administration. Madam President, anyone who cares about property rights should be dismayed by this nomination and should vote against it if you don't want to see overly aggressive takings jurisprudence that allows the government to take your private property. Anyone concerned about free speech should be concerned about this nomination if you don't want to see expansive government power taking away the rights of citizenry to free speech. Anyone that cares about local control and federalism and and the ability of, of local school boards and legislatures to make policy decisions should be concerned. Anyone concerned about our right to life should be concerned about drones having the power to take our life without judicial process. And Madam President, anyone concerned about liberty and the rule of law should be deeply concerned about a judicial nominee who embraces courts as a tool of power and the president disregarding the law. Madam President, I urge my colleagues to oppose this nomination. I yield the floor.